Good afternoon, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you for staying for Sunday school. I know some of you are anxious to get to ALI. We are going to be continuing Psalms 119 in our Sunday school class. We are on week number, I'm not sure, but we are pretty far into it. We are going over verses 129 to 136 this week, which is the Hebrew letter P. Hey, P. It's P-E. We'll go P. The, verse, the verses say, Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. For the cash, would you please pray a blessing on our Sunday school class this morning or afternoon? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity we have today to hear your word, to hear Brother Phil Bear bring forth his Bible lesson. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to instruct us in your righteousness. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Testimonies. His testimonies. What is a testimony? We have two of them. Old Testament and New Testament. What is a testimony, though? It's a declaration of what something is. A testament to what they are. It describes who and what you have done. A final will and testament, I guess, is your last chance to say what you really think. And in doing so, reveal what your true character is and was. And his testament describes who and what the Lord is. We know it as a revelation of who he is. Time and time again, the psalmist in 119 follows the same pattern. It is the same pathway, the same steps. It starts with a revelation of who God is. And it doesn't stop there. Oftentimes we think it's enough just to say, okay, that's great, I heard of it, and move along. But the psalmist is saying, what you have revealed is the start of my thought here. And thy testimonies are wonderful. It's very easy to think wonderful. Oh, yeah, I've seen Wonderful Life. That's great. And every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. And I'm glad George didn't jump off the bridge. And we like to think that wonderful only means extremely good or something that is well done or acceptable. And our English language has been dumbed down. We use words. There's a case in point. I have words. They're not coming out. <laughs> Brilliant. What do we tend to do? We tend to say things are good. No, no, it's really, really good. And then we think of, oh, it's exceptionally good. Well, you can just say exceptional. It's fantastic. Well, yeah, you're using a word, but it doesn't convey what the meaning is. You're saying it's a fantasy. And we've lost what wonderful really means. We say everything is wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, life is wonderful. Well, judging by the sarcasm, <laughs> good doesn't qualify for what you're describing. But we've lost what it means. It is a wonder. I am left in awe. It is magnitudes above my comprehension. Not just it's better than what I'm thinking about. It is beyond, mm. or you're left yes. in awe. It is, the only way I describe it is you ever see something and your mouth just falls open because you don't have any words. Yeah. You can't describe it. It is impossible to put to it. Yeah. And then try and explain to somebody and you're just like, well, well you just got to see it for yourself. Mm. You don't understand the magnitude of how great it is. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what he's saying here is thy testimonies are wonderful. Psalm right. 93 5 says, Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. His testimonies, what has revealed about himself, are very sure. They are holy and they are unchanging. Psalms 25 10 says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth mm -hmm. unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. <coughs> Exodus 15, 11 says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Glorious in holiness. We're content with saying there's not holy and holy, but to be glory and holiness. Glorious. Beyond our understanding of what it means to be holy, we don't have the words to describe the absoluteness of his holiness. Mm -hmm. right. It falls short. It says, Who is unlike unto thee, O Lord? Is there anything even close to him? Mm -hmm. no. How can anything that is created think that it is on the level of the creator? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Kind of weird. We can't even comprehend parts of creation. Right. You cannot realize how vast space is. Right. Right. Let alone how vast the town of Enfield really is. <laughs> Don't believe me? Start at State Line and try and run down Route 5. No. <laughs> Enfield is a lot longer than you think it is. Yeah. When you're driving on vacation through Massachusetts, it's 56.4 miles. That is a long way. We've lost a perception of how truly magnificent things are because we now travel great distances at great <laughs> speeds. We have become a smaller world because of communications, yes. because of virtual, mm -hmm. virtual reality and Zoom and Teams and everything else. To the point that, as a business, we used to meet people face to face. Mm. We used to have communications yeah. with companies. Uh -huh. And now it's, I'll just hit you on a Zoom. Yeah. Maybe they'll be on camera, maybe they won't be. Yeah, maybe they'll be wearing pajamas, <laughs> as I probably will be, except no. for the button up shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love Zoom meetings and I joke, but I do wear Crocs because they are comfortable. A lot more comfortable than dress shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think they work with this suit. Perfect. They make some nice cuts. Anyways, even the best intentions, even the best intentions of men is idolatry. Mm -hmm. The best intentions. Mm, yeah, right. yeah. Not just what serves us, but even us who are his people and his children to make assumptions is idolatry. Amen. That's right. Yeah. We have to stick to his revelation yeah. of mm -hmm. what he has declared about himself. Right. Otherwise we steal right. him of his glory. We steal recognition of who he is. Yep. Help us, Lord. Psalm 77, 11 starts with, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy works and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as our God? Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. It's when you see him. It makes a difference. It says, I will remember your works, O Lord. He makes an impact. Those wonders of old, that psalmist in Psalm 77, wasn't there for the wonders of old. But those wonders have lasted and have endured and continues to make an impact upon creation when you see them. They are worth meditating on. They are worth talking about. He has established and declared his way. And it is beyond us. 
But he has declared it. And we know he has communicated it through the Lord Jesus Christ in a way that we can understand. The man Jesus Christ is everything revealed of the Almighty God that exists outside of creation that our minds cannot comprehend or even approach unto. Praise Jesus. A man who has felt and gone through things that we go through. Mm -hmm. Not to piggyback too much in this morning's message, but the pain and suffering that he felt yeah. as a man makes him relatable mm -hmm. to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That when I go and I complain about, Lord, this really hurts, he says, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still God. Amen. I haven't changed your circumstances. It's okay to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have pain. It's okay to have emotions, Correct. but it is not okay to think something wrong of me. Yeah. That's right. I have yeah. already paid the cost yes. for every hurt that's in your life. I have right. changed. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Lord. Really good. Isaiah got that revelation in 6 verse 1. It says, in the year that King Zion died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That train was a cape. And the only way you got along the cape was by conquering other countries. Yeah. And you would put those other countries to demonstrate that they fall behind you. That they are under you. That they're only worth following behind. It demonstrated strength. But it also demonstrates safety to that kingdom. You want a king who has a long train. Yeah. You don't want an unproven king that has nothing behind him. Right. You want to follow that authority that has conquered all. Mm. And above it stood the seraphims. Each one has six wings and twenty covered with his face and twenty covered with his feet and twenty did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Three holies wasn't enough to demonstrate the depth of the holy. We have them echoing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy for thousands of years forever, and it will never touch the depth of his holiness. And we think we can define with our thoughts and good intentions. And the voice of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. <clears throat> Mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I have unclean lips and an unclean people. And they were the chosen people. Hmm. Not because of anything they did. That's right. But because God said, they are going to be my amen, people. Amen, amen. And if they were amen. unclean, and he said, they are my people people. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have Jesus. to get it out of our heads that we are perfect. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We realize that we have so much in common. I'm going to say 99% in common with everybody who's not here this morning. That 1% right. is God's calling on our life and us responding. Yeah. It yeah. is yeah. His grace, yes. and His mercy. Yeah. It is the only thing that separates us. Yes. So yeah. when we get on our judgmental high horse, get off. Yeah. 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 We are all sinners. Yes. Yeah. We have all fallen short. It is Him. That is the only difference yes. between those here and out there. That's right. is he is active in our lives, and yes. we look to Him Jesus. for it. Right. We've yeah. seen the revelation and we've responded. Yes. He is still active in everybody's lives that aren't here, saying, Come to me. Yes. Right. He hasn't stopped. We don't stop. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's good. Yes. <clears throat> Thy testimonies are wonderful. And if it's stopped there, hmm. it's revelation <coughs> unfulfilled. It is just knowledge out. Mm -hmm. 
but the implementation of that knowledge and understanding is therefore my soul doth keep them. <clears throat> yeah. Your revelation is so wondrous. I have seen you, and because of that, my soul guards that. That's what that key means. It's not just, oh, I put it in a hope chest and I, you know, a little one and lock it and someday I'll open it up. It means an active guarding. It becomes the most important thing that you guard. It is the priority in your life of keeping that safe. Those who have become parents, you become a usable resource as a parent. Your life is no longer your own. Yeah. It's yeah. now yeah. about providing for your children. Right. Your focus has shifted to that. Yeah. When we see him, our focus gets off of ourselves and gets on keeping yeah. our soul because his wonders. When you see what he has done, when you see who he is, when you see the times that he is acting in our lives, even when we don't recognize it, our soul must guard it. That revelation <laughs> becomes active. Right. <clears throat> continues on in 130 and says, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. Thank God that I'm included here in the simple. <laughs> and the reality is all of humanity is the simple. <clears throat> because we don't have that revelation. We don't have that wisdom. We don't have that understanding. I'm not buying man is inherently good. Mm -hmm. I've seen too much of man right. looking in the mirror, knowing that that person looking back at me yes. isn't good to believe for an instant that mankind is good. Mm -hmm. Right. The entrance of thy word giveth light. That entrance, the Hebrew word is pathak, which means an unfolding, an opening. The mind, in the image that you're paying your mind is actually like a doorway. Is that word, his word, his revelation, is a doorway that bringeth forth light. Hallelujah. His word is what opens the revelation. <clears throat> we can't know him, but his words are a doorway of it. Amen. And it is the testimony, it is the revelation of him that is sure, making wise the simple. That gives the wisdom to recognize your state. To realize the reality of the revelation versus who you are. Recognition that you are not God. Mm, amen. It's very amen. easy to be God in your life until you see him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Psalm 197 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. Mm -hmm. When you see him and you recognize your state, <coughs> the psalm says, I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. When I saw you and saw the state that I am in, I recognized at a primal level how much I needed you. Mm -hmm. That I panted, that I longed. <coughs> This might not be fair since we're near lunchtime, but yesterday <laughs> I smoked chicken drumsticks. Now I know the drumsticks is, is the least um, exquisite part of the chicken. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I just ate it. Now, by themselves, okay, fine. Put some kernel seasoning on it, we're getting a little bit better. Yeah. But put them on a smoker so the yeah. skin gets thick, the meat cooks. Meat cook. And <laughs> it's, it's 60 minutes, right? Yeah. The temperature I was cooking was 60 minutes to cook them before I took a temperature to make sure they're right. Slow, slow and low. Yeah. I took the meat thermometer, I poked it into the chicken as I did all oh, the chicken juices just oh. started oh. 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 And immediately my mouth started sapping. <laughs> <laughs> That's the image that the psalmist is talking about. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. I saw how good it looked, 
and immediately I recognized that I needed it, I wanted it, and that was going to be a driving factor. Mm -hmm. Psalms 42, and we saw the song here, says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I need your commandments. I am responding to your revelation and recognition of need in my life. Give me what I need. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. The psalmist isn't begging for the Lord to look at him. The psalmist, at this point, we've all seen, the psalmist has a relationship. But it is a declaration of the nature of God and not a request. <coughs> those that love thy name have demonstrated that love mm. by seeking God. I'm going to say it again. Those that love his name demonstrate the love of that name by seeking him and his ways. Mm -hmm. That's great. Right. And seeking him, good. he knows that look thou upon me, he knows God sees everything. But he says, those that seek your way it is as if you are looking directly upon them, guiding their life. Look thou upon me. He knows all. When you start to notice his will, you start noticing his direct focus, his looking at your life. And you begin to recognize his mercy in spite of our <coughs> sins. He's not begging him. He's stating his, I love in your name. I know you're looking at me. Mm. I know your mercy is present in my life. And he continues with, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. It is desire of the psalmist to have his pathway be the pathway that keeps him in direct correspondence with God. That mm -hmm. he stays in his paths. <coughs> not the psalmist. <coughs> is understanding that God's ways keep you under his dominion. By following his steps, you know that you're not leaving his kingdom. Hmm. Right. That you're not going unto a king who really has no cave. Right. 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 <clears throat> and it's also the psalmist saying, I do not want to be subject to those things that you free me. Right. We talked about it last week in 1 Corinthians 6, 12. It's, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Mm -hmm. It is very easy yep. to go back to our own past mm -hmm. and think we are the king, but the reality is, is we put something else on the throne in our life. Right. That's right, man. And he's saying... Mm -hmm. Keep me on that pathway because I know it keeps you on the throne in my life. Right. Amen. Right. That's true. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Immediately, oppression of others. Mm -hmm. Deliver me from the oppression of other men. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it my own thought on this. That word for man is Adam. Literally means Adam. I think the psalmist, and this is again my speculation, but this is the psalmist saying, deliver me from the oppression caused by my humanity, mm. by me trying to be king in my life. That's good. Deliver me from the oppression that I bring upon myself. Deliver me from the things that I take upon that I don't even realize that I'm in chains to. <coughs> Take away that oppression from me so that I will keep thy precepts. There is a desire when he's had the revelation, the recognition, and he's following his pathways, and he's in the right steps to take away those other things in my life that I haven't handed over to you, that I haven't recognized, because I am comfortable where I'm at in relationship with you. The relationship I have with God is good enough at this point. Mm. And it's so easy to stop at good enough and not get to the perfection that he wants. 
And the psalmist is saying, take it away from me. Deliver me from the oppression that I have in me because I am human. I want to be king in my life. I want to think I'm in control. I want to wear a flashy cape. No. <laughs> okay. I want you to reign. I want to follow your direction. It says, make thy face shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. That doesn't mean that the Lord wasn't shining upon him. He's saying is, I want to continue walking so that your presence is focused on me. I don't want to be content just being there. I want your face to shine at me so I can look and talk to you. Anybody want to talk to someone face to face and not talk to their back while you're walking? You look over? That's not a close relationship. Zoom's great, but if no one ever sees anybody's face, you lose it. It becomes robotic. Yep. It becomes another meeting that could have been an email. But it's saying is, I want that direct contact. I want your face looking at me. I want to look at your face. Right. I want your presence focused mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And I want it to shine upon my servant. Yeah. Because I want it to bring your light. I want it to illuminate yes. my paths. Um, I want it to demonstrate where I'm supposed to go. I want to follow your steps, Lord, but I want to do so as long as it's you illuminating the way. I don't want to just follow your path because I think they're yours. But I want constant reassurance that I am growing and walking in you. Teach me thy statutes so that I walk closer. Teach me thy statutes because my statutes are not adequate to get me there. My statutes stop short. We don't need the devil made me do it. I'm capable enough of screwing up my own life. I have, I will. But like that psalmist says, teach me thy statutes. Don't let me be the cause of my failure when I could have been delivered. Amen. I am relying upon you for this continued relationship. And rivers of water run down my eyes because they keep not thy law. There is some serious poetic license in that. But it expresses an internal emotional change. Is it creates such intense, gut-ripping sorrow to see those who don't keep thy law. It's not anger. It's not judgment. Those that in previous things he said are the oppressors, those rivers of water are for those that oppressed him too. It is for all those who haven't yet come under the submission of his kingship. And how that is reproduction <clears throat> is that seeing the world through God's eyes. It is seeing things how he sees them. Mm. As people who need him. <clears throat> It is very easy to build up anger and resentment for those that aren't here. Right. And those that we talk to time and time again and want to close the door and don't want to come. God loves them immensely. Yes. And if yes. we yes. had this perspective, we, like the <coughs> psalmist, would have that gut wrenching feeling where we mm. would have those rivers coming from our eyes. Because they keep not his law. Mm. And it all comes back to they keep not his law. And I tell you what, it's worth keeping. Because when I saw him, I didn't get a good enough glimpse. I didn't just say, oh yeah, there he is. I saw him and I was amazed when I saw him. His The wonder of him. The depth of his love. Lord, help us get to the place where we have a small fraction of that love and desire and fraction or of his perception. Mm -hmm. If we got a tiniest, it would flip this world upside mm -hmm. That's down. Right. That's right. Yep. Seeing things how he wants would change everything in our lives fundamentally. We cannot yes. be content with extremely good. 
or very good. We have to get to the place where we stop and look and say, you are wondrous. Not because we've been trained to say he's wondrous, but because we've seen him and there is nothing else we can say. Because his light emanates through us where we want to do whatever it takes to please him. And we see his love and his mercy. We want to do whatever it takes so others see his love and his grace and his mercy. Don't settle for extremely good. Pastor, would you please pray? Lord, thank you for this demonstration of your character. Thank you for demonstrating your love for us. The hope we have in you. Lord, I ask that you stir in us that desire to be closer to you, to be more pleasing to you. That you would stir in our hearts that longing to be in right standing and allow your light to shine through us. Don't let us be complacent in our walk with you, but draw us ever closer to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.